I got started off in ceramics um, in the 60s, late 60s, and I started off going to Sir John Cass in Whitechapel in the East End of London, and I was there for 18 months, and then a friend of mine introduced me to um, Victor Margrie, who was in charge of the Harrow Pottery course, and um, I got on that as a technician. So Harrow was like the, the monastery of mud in a way. It was it was fantastic in the in the late sixties. You know, I was I was working as a technician alongside all the top potters of the day. You know, uh, Wally Keeler, Mick Casson, Colin Pearson, Mo Jupp. When I left there, I went to work for um, Brian Newman, and then after that, I went to work for Colin Pearson, who became my my mentor really. But anyway, after I left Colin. Um, I came down to Plymouth in uh, 1971, I think it was, and uh, started a, a studio in the Barbican in Plymouth. I went to see an exhibition of um, Howard Hodgkin's paintings at the Whitechapel Gallery. There was a huge painting, it was about nearly three to four foot across, round, and I just stood in front of it and I was just astonished that, you know, somebody could do something that colourful on a big round uh, canvas or wooden board. It was then that um, I started to look at um, Howard Hodgkin's paintings and his mark making and uh, colour, use of colour. I'd never been a painter, now I became a, a painter, if you like, on pots. One of the most interesting things that um, I discovered was uh, through looking at Hans Hoffmann's paintings. He created or used a method in his teaching which he calls push-pull. And in a sense, what that means is you put one colour next to another and one will move forward and one will move back. So now I love to kind of bring in this push-pull use of colour. I use a, a yoghurt pot. In the bottom of it I put about a, a quarter of an inch of water. And then to that I add um, 20 grams of a body stain or a glaze stain. And then on top of that I add a white slip now the white slip I make up out of the body of the clay that I use. My clay is white, so any turnings or trimmings, they dry out. And then I crush them to powder, and then again, add them to water, like a bucket full, and then let that dissolve over a few days, and then that becomes my white slip. And then I have a bucket of this white slip, which is the base for all my colors. So then, going back to the yoghurt pots, I've got, you know, 20 grams of dissolved colour and to that I add the white slip and then that becomes the base slip of that colour and I do that with all the other colours. So when I lay the colours out, I've got two, um, two palettes, two glass palettes that I put on a bat and um, I just lay the colours out in a, in a kind of an order that I know that, that I'll be able to get to. And um, <clears throat> once that's done and I plot out my first image, once I've got that plotted out, what I want to do then is I want to intensify the, the colours and intensify the image. So the first initial statements are made by either I can brush brush on an image or I can just start randomly sponging on, you know, the colours. Then it, what I've been doing more recently is, again, I've got um, a white slip. Well, it's actually not a slip. It's more white clay that I've kind of added water to and I've, I've, I've mixed it up with a uh, fork and stuff like that. And then um, I've got uh, some spatulas uh, that I use that I've made up, I've cut out, out of um, the lids of yoghurt pots, so they're really bendy. So what I do then, I pick up uh, a small amount of the clay 
dip it in the, in the strong colour and then, uh, the only word I can think of is I smear it, I smear it on, but I mean, it's like using a spatula. Once that's done, the original image is more or less covered up. And then what I do, I sponge on, to the best of my ability, the original colour. Now what that does, it picks up the spatula marks. And that, you know, that's when I really like it, you know, because then it's a new picture and you never know what it's going to look like. And then um, once that's done, then uh, it goes in as a biscuit firing, comes out. And then the glazing, I brush the glaze on, then I start to wipe the glaze off with my hand. Now what this does, it creates a surface that is almost matte. Because the glaze is so thin, um, you, can see, you can see the brush strokes much more clearly and the mark making, you know. Uh, and then you can see that the pot is the canvas.